currently presenting two uh, different uh, topics today. These are not uh, these are not considered as major pediatric topics apart from the sous vide DVH uh, and uh, the other topics. These are also can be asked in most of the viewers. In fact, I got asked once in Ireland. So uh, my first topic is uh, tiptoe walking. As we know, it's a condition which is defined as inability to make heel contact with the floor during the initial stance phase of the gait cycle and absence of full foot contact within the ground during any stage of the cycle. There's multiple etiologies which could vary between uh, idiopathic toe walking and neuromuscular conditions. It's about 2% in prevalence among the normal population, but you could have a very high incidence of tiptoe walking among those uh, patients who suffer with neuropsychiatric conditions and developmental delay, which can be up to about 41%. Most common, as I said, is idiopathic toe walking and there's no clear pathophysiology uh, has been uh, described. There could be associated family history and genetics and tiptoe walking is actually it's normal up to two years of age. So even if you want to call it idiopathic tiptoe walking or to come up with diagnosis it should be over two years of age. More about idiopathic tiptoe walking. It's a bilateral symmetrical condition with or without Achilles tendon contracture in a child older than two years of age in the absence of other etiology. Idiopathic tiptoe walking also could be prevalent in pediatric neuropsychiatric conditions such as attention deficit hyperactive disease or obsessive compulsive disorders, toroid syndrome. And then we talk about uh, neuromuscular conditions. Most common identified neuro neuromuscular causes are cerebral palsy. Up to 50% of the patients who suffer with cerebral palsy are two walkers. And the uh, Dachshund's muscular dystrophy is the most common muscular dystrophy, uh, which uh, uh, could uh, have uh, tiptoe walking. Uh, that's predominantly uh, because of the imbalance of the muscles. And the other causes include the spinal, central and peripheral causes. The central nervous system causes are the main, the cerebral palsy and the peripheral nervous and the spinal cord related problems are tethered cord, diastomatomyelia, spina bifida, and last, the any anatomical condition can cause tiptoe walking. In, when you approach these patients, it's quite important that we routinely review the patient's uh, full perinatal history, developmental history, and past medical history, as well as get a detailed history of the present illness, which could minimize the likelihood of missing a diagnosis or any neuromuscular condition. Idiopathic toe walking is most likely a toddler without any other medical problems, without any developmental delay. Most importantly, they started walking at a normal age and it is symmetrical. And they can walk flat-footed if prompted. When it comes to any neuromuscular conditions and neurological causes like central or peripheral uh, history, could reveal uh, a premature birth, delayed milestones, delayed walking, history of head injury or a vascular event, event which has occurred before two years of age, or a history of spinal cord injury with progressive neurology. These are the things you should ask in case if you're suspecting any neurological causes. Physical examination mainly focus on ruling out all the defined etiologies before settling on a diagnosis of idiopathic toe walking. So general examination, look at the patient appearance, gait, 
and look whether this is symmetrical or asymmetrical toe walking along with examination of the spine and lower extremities. You mainly look for any cutaneous abnormalities in the spine. If there's any leg length discrepancy, asymmetry or abnormal muscle development, pelvic asymmetry or fixed foot deformities. We have to do a thorough neurological examination in these patients and also assess the muscle strength, which can be assessed by gauging the ability of the child to rise independently from the floor or to climb an examination couch. In case of Deschamps muscular dystrophy, the other signs are signs such as Gower's sign, uh, lumbar lordosis, calf hypertrophy could be associated with this. Range of movement of the hip, knee and the ankle joints are quite important and the most important test that we should perform during the physical examination is a silver skull test. Uh, checking the range of movement, especially the dorsiflexion of the ankle with the knee extended and knee flex while maintaining the ankle in a neutral position. Investigations. This is again commonly asked by some examiners. How would you investigate this child? They mainly want to hear about blood markers of CPK or CK levels which, are, which is high in case of Dachshund muscular dystrophy, an MRI scan to rule out any central or spinal pathology. X-ray of the foot is important to rule out any bony abnormalities. Neuro, neurophysiological studies in case of a suspecting uh, Chalcomary tooth or hereditary sensory motor neuropathy. Data analysis and genetic testing in case of a. Uh, in case if you are looking for any associated syndrome. But most important investigations out of which are the bloods to check the CK levels, an MRI scan, and EMG studies can be mentioned. Treatment. In case of idiopathic toe walking, it's mainly reassurance and regular follow-up every six months. If the patient's not improving beyond three years of age, is mainly done for idiopathic toe walking. However, the treatment can be uh, divided for conservative as well as surgical. Conservative treatment should be considered if the patients uh, not improved after three years of age and continue to have progressive toe walking with heel cord contractures or tight heel cords. This conservative treatment includes stretching, casting, orthotics, and chemodenervation or botulinum toxin, out of which most commonly practiced are the stretching, casting, and the orthotics. Surgical treatment, mainly considered if the conservative measures fail to correct idiopathic toe walking, operating, operative lengthening, which could be open or percutaneous technique. And following this, patients will be put into a below knee plaster for six weeks. Complications with treatment, mainly the recurrent rate is quite high and tender lengthening should be quite cautiously done in those patients who suffer with uh, spastic or paralytic disorders, which could certainly make their gait worse, or them, which could even stop them walking because you might essentially uh, converting a jump gait to a crouch gait, especially in case of CP patients. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, in this topic you could be asked about a patient who's for example i just bought this is an 18 month old who just started walking and uh, parents are quite uh, worried that uh, who's uh, the child is wo child is walking on her tiptoes so uh, obviously it's 18 months old symmetrical if you think there's no other medical problems associated with it no other developmental delay obviously 
patients start walking at 18 months of age, certainly there's no developmental delay uh, in terms of achieving milestones, then you reassure the parents and bring them back in six months time. But this can, this uh, scenarios can differ. Uh, it could be a two year old, three year old or a five year old. Then again, we just ask for the scenario. We need to just mainly talk on taking a detailed history from the patient, including the perinatal history, developmental history, family history, and uh, history of the presenting illness with associated symptoms. Clinical examination, as I mentioned, which uh, is uh, quite important to do a spine examination, neurological examination, silver skull test, and investigations, mainly CK levels in the blood, MRI scan of the brain and spinal cord, and neurophysiological studies or EMG studies of the lower limb. And then we discuss the management options depending on the scenario. Right, uh, that's about toe walking. And second condition that I wanted to talk about today is in toeing, which is again, can be uh, kept, can be asked commonly. Uh, this could be asked as a abnormal rotational profile in the lower limb. It could be asked as in toeing, or it could be asked as a, asked as a child who's got excessive internal rotation of the hips with a W sign on a picture. So when a child walks or runs, the feet turns inward instead of pointing it straight ahead when it's called in towing. It's also called as pigeon toed. In towing often first noticed by the parents when a baby begins walking, but children at various ages may display in towing for different reasons. Differential diagnosis of in towing could be foot abnormalities such as metatarsal adductus and club foot, internal tibial torsion, which varies uh, between the newborns and the adults. In newborns, it's internally, in, sorry, in newborns, the tibias are normally internally rotated, but when they reach the adulthood or when they go past four years of age, the tibia rotation comes back to normal. Then the femoral antiversion is the other common causes, which is uh, around 10 to 20 degrees in a, adult cerebral palsy and hip dysplasia. Most common causes here mainly are the metatarsal adductus or the foot abnormalities, tibial torsion and femoral torsion. Clinical examination, we need to talk about Staheli's rotation profile, which, which, which is what the examiner is mainly expecting out of you. Out of that, we start with the foot progression angle which is around 15 degrees outwards or which is around 15 degrees outward rotated in a normal individual and uh, this could be uh, this could be inverted or this could be internally rotated in uh, young children and the foot progression angle varies between minus 8 to plus 16 and the age with Sorry, foot progression angle, it just varies depending on the age from 4 to 16, which could be from minus 8 to plus 16. Second most important uh, part of the examination is looking for the femoral neck antiversion. Or in other words, internal rotation of the femur more than 70 degrees with limited external rotation as suggestive of a femoral neck antiversion. The femoral antiversion again very, which starts around it's very high in a newborn between 30 to 50 and this could be about 10 to 15 once they reach adulthood as I mentioned before. How we check the femoral antiversion is by doing Craig's test lying the patient supine sorry lying the patient prone with one knee flexed up to 90 degrees at a time. 
and lower leg is rotated from side to side. While examining, while rotating the leg from side to side, examiner's other hand he feels the greater trochanter. The prominence of the greater trochanter changes on the lateral side. Sorry, the prominence of the greater trochanter on the lateral side, with the position of the leg. It's the angle between the it's the vertical angle vertic, uh, it's the angle between the vertical axis and the position of the leg. It's calculated at the antiversion of the femoral neck. I'll show you another picture about. So you can see the picture on my slide. Examining is feeling for the greater trochanter. We make sure the greater trochanter is parallel to the ground, or in other words, just feel for the most prominent part of the greater trochanter under your hand, and then your angle, the angle between the vertical axis and the leg is calculated as the antiversion of the femoral neck. Third component of Staheli's profile is a thigh foot angle. Patient again lying prone and you check the angle between the long axis of the thigh and the axis of the foot which you can see in my picture. And this again varies, this could be minus in a newborn and which could be around 30 degrees in an adult, which varies between minus 25 to 30. The uh, fourth component of the rotation profile is checking for the evidence of metatarsus adductus, mainly by drawing the heel bisector line which ideally should go between the second and the third toe. So you can see the first picture here, the normal one, where the line drawn in the center of the heel, which is going between the second and the third toe. In case of a mild metatarsal adductus, the line lies along the third toe, moderate one. This line lies between the third and the fourth toe, a severe one, the line lies between the fifth and the well, fourth and the fifth toe. <coughs> Sorry, the investigations mainly uh, in case of a rotational abnormality or in case of in towing is a CT scanogram, which essentially involves horizontal cuts through the hips, knees, and the ankle. Management increase femoral neck antiversion and internal tibial torsion. Will we mainly marry, manage initially if this child is less than eight years of age, providing there's no other major medical problems, we manage this non-operatively. Parents' reassurance is the most important component of this. And uh, you have to make sure that we review this patient once they reach seven years or over and decide on further treatment. But surgical indications are mainly, sorry, surgical treatment is mainly considered if the child is over eight years of age with a significant cosmetic or functional disability because of intoing, or if there's like, for example, if the child foot getting caught while walking or just having recurrent pause because of the intoing, if there's a, femoral neck antiversion beyond 50 degrees or beyond 70 degrees of internal rotation of the femur or the sorry it's medial hip rotation here that means inter excessive internal rotation if it's more than 85 degrees I've shown, shown in my slide and there's less external rotation or lateral rotation less than 10 degrees. The surgical treatment mainly involve proximal femoral or subtrochantric osteotomies distal tibial osteotomy or combined procedures. Um, this could be asked more in detail about uh, proximal femoral osteotomies and uh, complications involved with them and distal tibial osteotomies. Why we don't do proximal tibial osteotomies, Cosson's phenomenon, vulgus abnormalities of the knee following the osteotomy needs to be can be asked. 
the management for metatarsus adductus mainly we have to make sure that uh, patient who's noticed to have a metatarsal adductus being screened for ddh and check whether it's a flexible or a fixed def deformity flexible deformities mostly resolve spontaneously serial casting should be preferred very early if the deformity is resistant and stiff metatarsal adductus is an indication for surgery. Surgical procedures could be abductor halosis release and capsulotomy of the first tarsal metatarsal joint or metatarsal osteotomies or other midfoot osteotomies, including lateral column shortening or medial column lengthening procedures. But these are the two topics I just wanted to talk today. And uh, I let Akta carry on with the hot seat and I uh, will join with you soon.